As Arsenal fans mourn the departure of enigmatic Frenchman Thierry Henry, whispers of a perfect replacement began to circulate through the vibrant streets and buzzing stadiums. Among those in contention was Eduardo da Silva, a Croatian forward blessed with technical brilliance and an innate goal-scoring instinct. An unassuming figure with an earnest smile, Eduardo's reputation had risen sharply in the weeks leading up to his arrival at Arsenal. Think of Eduardo da Silva, and it is impossible not to think of the incident at St. Andrews in February 2008, when a foul by Martin Taylor left his foot hanging limp from his leg, the ankle dislocated and the shin bone broken. That injury defines his overall footballing career. He seems to feel remarkably bittered about his time in the Premier League. In 2010, he said, it wasn't my fault I broke my leg. But it's true to say that moment changed my sporting career. I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't suffered the injury. Who can say what might have occurred to Arsenal? A first Premier League crown since the Invincibles slid painfully out of their reach as they were deprived of their best finisher in years and left traumatized by the horror of his horrific injury. Even now, they find it difficult to move past that particular incident. In this video, we explore into a story that transcends the realm of football, where dreams converge with reality, and a tackle that ends the echoes of greatness. In a period, he was capable of carrying the torch of brilliance to ignited with every touch of the ball. This is a story of tragedy, misfortune, perseverance, and how a single tackle kills an entire career and a club hope of been named champions. Stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for videos like this weekly. Eduardo da Silva was born on the 25th of February, 1983, in Bangu Atletico Clube, Brazil. A shy kid in the Carioca district of Bangu had only one dream, to emulate his idol Romario and play for Vasco da Gama. There wasn't much to do in Villa Kennedy, the crime-ridden suburb near Rio de Janeiro that a young Eduardo called home. Football was his only escape from a life of crime, low-wage labor, or worse. And while he aspired to be a professional, his coaches were less convinced. Although Eduardo was motivated, he lacked the strength and skill required for competitiveness at the highest level. He joined his neighborhood club CBF New Kennedy, determined to fulfill his dreams of a professional career, after becoming frustrated at being passed over by the bigger clubs. In 1999, he was approached by a scout from Croatian club Dynamo Zagreb. They were hardly a big name in Rio, but they offered him a trial alongside his teammate Leandro. With offers in their own country not forthcoming, the boys took their chance, arriving in a frigid foreign country with a cryptic language and no support system. I could hardly bear the cold and the snow, not at all, he recalled later on, remembering the sight of an unfamiliar city from his hotel window. In the days before Wi-Fi and Skype, a lonely 16-year-old sought solace in constant phone calls to his mother back home. After impressing Dynamo coaches with his resilience and adaptability, he toiled away in the reserves, even concealing a hairline fracture of his foot for fear it would harm his chances of playing. Leandro had an unfavorable beneficial encounter and eventually went back to Brazil. Despite the fact that Eduardo was now completely alone, his performances made him feel better. Coaches at Dinamo still believed he wasn't ready for the elite team. After a brief spell with Clube Atletico Bangu in Brazil, he was sent on loan to bottom dwellers Interzapre in the winter of 2002. It was now sink or swim time. Ten goals and 15 games later, he was summoned back to the capital. The day after his 18th birthday, he signed his first professional contract. Eduardo was encouraged by the club's demonstration of faith and set out to become one of the Croatian league's most dangerous strikers. Slight yet elegant, he was a cunning finisher with excellent movement, scoring nine goals in his debut campaign as he was named Player of the Year. The following season, however, was when Europe's big clubs took an interest. Starring alongside youngsters Vedran Korluka and Luka Modric, Eduardo was the focal point of a skillful Zagreb attack, joint top scoring alongside Ivan Bosniak as Plavi wrought the title from their eternal rivals Hajduk. Any doubts that lingered would soon be quashed, as Eduardo finished the season with 47 goals, breaking Goran Vlovic's 10-year goal-scoring record in the process. 
He even had time to score a hat trick against the hated Hajuk in one of his final games, before news of a move to London made the headlines. The Gunners were amidst of transition. The sales of Thierry Henry and Freddie Leungberg had removed the last traces of the Invincibles, following the move to the Emirates Stadium meant finances were constricted. Crippled by debt, Wenger had no choice but to implement a policy focused on youth, hoping a clutch of teenage talents could replicate the gritty brilliance of their predecessors. This was a new generation, with everything to prove and nobody to fall back on. Eduardo made an immediate impression, heading a debut goal against Lazio in the Amsterdam tournament. For many Gunners fans, it was the first sighting of a man who was anonymous even in his home country. He scored his first Premier League goals at Goodison Park, controlling a Gale Clichy punt to flick an impudent finish past Tim Howard. His second was even more casual. Phil Jagielka left prone as a curling shot found the American's bottom corner. He can be our new match winner, Wenger marveled, joining the chorus of Gunners fans who felt they were witnessing the birth of something special. By February, Arsenal were the favorites to secure their first Premier League trophy since 2004. Wenger's men were five points clear, having lost just once in the league all season. With 12 fixtures remaining, they headed to St. Andrews on the 23rd of February to face bottom dwellers Birmingham. With three minutes gone, the Croatian received a pass from Clichy on the half turn. As he nudged the ball towards a teammate, Birmingham defender Martin Taylor lunged for the ball. He found Eduardo's leg instead. His tibia and fibula fractured instantly, the shattered bones rupturing the tissue of his standing leg as the force of impact dislocated his ankle. At first, the extent of the injury wasn't obvious. It was only when Cesc Fabrega started urging towards the bench that a sickening realization spread throughout the ground, the Spaniard visibly shaken as the nauseating scene unfolded. Alexander Hleb turned away, putting his hand to his mouth as though he were about to be sick. Mathieu Flamini raged at the referee, whilst Emmanuel Adebayor shook his head in quiet, disbelieving horror. Seven minutes and forty seconds after the tackle, Eduardo was lifted off on a stretcher, an oxygen mask wrapped around his face as he curled into the fetal position. Everybody knew how bad it was, even the home supporter, who broke into sympathetic applause as the covered stretcher made its way towards the ambulance and finally to the nearby Selly Oak Hospital. I think this guy should never play football again, said a visibly upset Wenger after the game. What is he doing on the football pitch? When asked if Eduardo's season was over, Wenger's reply was sullenly prophetic. More than his season is over. While for Arsenal, it was the beginning of the end for their season. Can you be better than you were before? It was a simple question, one that Eduardo must have contemplated during his 11-month absence from the first team. The reality was that nobody knew the answer. After his surgery, Eduardo relocated back to Rio, surrounded by his family and friends as he rebuilt his shattered bones and atrophied muscles under the watchful eye of Brazilian kinesiologist Odir de Souza. After 11 months on the sideline, on the 16th of February 2009, the best day of Eduardo's life saw Arsenal welcome Cardiff City to the Emirates in the FA Cup fourth round. 20 minutes into his comeback, Carlos Vela drifted in a cross from the left-hand side. Eduardo, not for the first time in a gunner's shirt, ghosted into space to direct a header into the net. Some things are just meant to be, cried commentator Clive Tildesley, as the Croatian was swallowed by a sea of delirious red shirts. His second was converted from the penalty spot, a clumsy challenge from Gavin Ray topping an emotional, unforgettable afternoon. I had tears in my eyes, he told reporters after the game. I celebrated by kissing my wedding ring because my wife, Andrea, daughter, Lorena, and family supported me right through it. Even better awaited in the next round. Arsenal trampled Burnley 3-0. But it was Eduardo's 51 saint minute goal that summed up everything about what made him special. How dare you be that good, proclaimed ITV's bewildered commentator Peter Drury, with Wenger claiming it was the best goal he'd seen all season. For all the beauty of the goals, however, Eduardo's new reality was inescapable. He was now a squad player, 
given runouts in domestic cup competitions and meaningless Champions League encounters. Eduardo would score just three more goals the following campaign, with the summer arrival of Bordeaux striker Marouane Chamac pushing him finally towards the exit. On the 21st of July 2010, Eduardo signed for Shakhtar Donetsk on a four-year contract for an undisclosed fee. With Eduardo lured to the Donbass arena by the promises of his national teammate Darido Shurna, with the 2010 World Cup looming, all parties felt that a transfer could reinvigorate his flailing career. He made his Ukrainian Premier League debut on the 7th of August 2010, playing the first half and netting the second goal in a 5-0 win against PFC Sevastopol. Shakhtar and Arsenal were both drawn into Group H in the Champions League, despite praying not to be drawn alongside his former teammates. Returning to the Emirates Stadium on the 19th of October 2010 for Shakhtar's UEFA Champions League group match with Arsenal, Eduardo came on as a substitute with his new side 3-0 down and received a standing ovation from the Arsenal supporters. He scored a late consolation goal for Shakhtar in a game that Arsenal went on to win 5-1, at which point the Arsenal fans rose again and cheered their former hero. In the rematch, he scored the winning goal in a 2-1 victory and refused to celebrate, showing respect for his former club. They weren't just congratulating him on his recovery, they were welcoming him back to a home he should never have left. Eduardo tried to concentrate on his own footballing redemption. Nevertheless, Eduardo blossomed in Ukraine, voted Player of the Year in 2016 after a season brimming with clinical, skillful goals. After a fruitful loan spell with Flamengo in 2014-2015, he finally returned to Brazil in 2017 with Atletico Paranaense, but the club cut their losses after a short, injury-ridden spell. Aged 34, the luster in his boots finally seems to be fading. Eduardo had shown immense talent and potential, being a clinical striker with an eye for goal. If not for the injury, it is likely that Eduardo da Silva would have continued to progress and have a very successful football career. He might have continued to shine at Arsenal, becoming a key player for the club, and possibly making a significant impact for the Croatian national team as well. He could have attracted attention from other top European clubs, and he might have experienced success in various domestic and international competitions. His goal-scoring prowess and footballing abilities could have earned him accolades and individual awards, establishing himself as one of the prominent strikers of his time. However, it's important to remember that football careers are unpredictable, and many factors can influence a player's trajectory. While the injury was undoubtedly a significant setback for Eduardo, after Worth he was not able to replicate the same level of form he had before the unfortunate incident. Eduardo da Silva will forever be remembered as a striker that was unable to attain his full potential due to a single tackle. Thank you for watching. We release video like this weekly. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.